For many applications that involve images, segmentation is one of the most important steps. Image segmentation concerns dividing the image into parts or regions that are correlated according to some criterion. Usually, there is some semantics involved in this criterion. For example, let us take this image of a car um, driving on the road. So, when we want to achieve segmentation of this image, we can think of many regions that can be um, taken as an output. I give you as, as an example those segmented regions that relate the region of the uh, vegetation, the car, and the road. However, uh, other people could try to segment this image into other parts or try to enforce other types of criterion in order to do that. For uh, an algorithm to be defined and to be considered image segmentation algorithm, we've, um, we follow those definitions. Let R be the region occupying all image. So R is basically all the pixels of the image. Segmentation would partition R in N subregions so that the union of all subregions will be the image itself. Every region that is segmented is connected regarding the pixels so that means that even if I have two regions of the image that belong to the same semantic content they, uh, they by themselves are connected using uh, at least for a, for a pixel that connects them. The intersection between um, regions that are not, well, that are different regions is empty. That means we don't have, uh, in principle, we don't have a pixel that would belong to two regions at the same time. And we can define uh, some criterion Q so that when computed in, in for, for a given region, for a specific region Ri, this will output true and when we make the union of this region Ri with any other adjacent region we have a response false. This will, allows us, uh, this, this will allow us to um, correctly compute um, the difference between the regions, the, the similarity between the regions. Segmentation is subjective in some sense and it is considered one of, the one of the most difficult tasks in image processing because it is application dependent and because of that often we require a prior knowledge in order to be successful. So we need a well formulated problem and use the appropriate method in order to tackle this problem. Let us take this image as an example. Our task is to segment terminations and printed components of this board. If I try to use a naive implementation, it could lead to this segmentation. So as we can see here, the segmented regions or, or uh, pixels are in white, while the objects that I uh, don't have interest is in black, is represented in black. So we can see here there, there are many uh, pix white pixels that actually belong to the background or to the board itself, not the termination. So maybe um, there was something wrong with the definition of this uh, algorithm. Another example is, let's say that I want to segment clouds from an image of a sky. Um, it is very important to well define what I mean by clouds, because that can be uh, an elusive concept. So if I try to uh, perform a segmentation using a very basic algorithm, it could lead to this, but in fact what I wanted to, to have is just a mask of where possibly there are uh, clouds. Do I want to count the number of cl uh, clouds? So all this I have to consider before uh, designing the segmentation algorithm. Because of this difficulty or this challenge, there are many methods for segmentation. 
I w I'm going to mention a few of them. So global knowledge is uh, often the most basic ones and they are mostly histogram based. So we are going to look for thresholds and intensities using the histogram. There are also edge based uh, methods that search for discontinuities between neighbors or between pixels in a local region. Region based usually connects pixels that are similar in some neighborhood. So it's kind of the opposite of the edge based method. Model based methods search for patterns with a predefined model. So we, uh, we define some model and then we try to follow them uh, throughout the image. The connectivity based ones uh, usually model the image using a graph or a network and then employ graph theory algorithms in order to perform image segmentation. And finally, uh, partial derivative equations can also be used in this problem. They are very effective in many scenarios because um, they, they allow for a complex background to be separated from complex objects. In this lecture, I'm going to mention those three first uh, methods that are um, used for segmentation. The first one is thresholding. It uh, basically is to separate pixels in region given the intensity or color. This threshold can be obtained manually or using some automatic method such as the OTSU, which is one of the most uh, famous or widely used methods for image thresholding. Adaptive thresholding is also possible, and by adapting, I mean that we are going to compute a threshold per region of the image. So we are going to try, uh, try to segment image by regions, by parts of the image, not globally. So we, we already have seen this uh, equation, so basically a threshold we substitute uh, every value of the pixel for a value V if R, which is the uh, intensity, is um, below some or so, sorry above some threshold, and for zero otherwise. The threshold L is defined so that it separates regions of interest, and uh, V is the value set for those pixels above the threshold. Let's say, uh, usually, when it's a binary image, V is uh, equal to 1, but it could be any value that we want. The most widely used method uh, for automatic thresholding is the Otsu method. This method, uh, the classical version at least, assumes that the image is a bimodal histogram. This means that there are clearly two, um, two groups of intensities, uh, that what we call here two classes of intensities. This method uh, is very simple but can be powerful because it separates intensities in two classes or groups in, in a way that it minimizes the interclass variance so we want that pixels that are considered um, in a group to have the least as possible as variance so they are more consistent so they are more uniform and it maximizes the variance among classes so um, the more similar we have each class within each other is better and the more difference we have between classes is better the basic algorithm is as follows first compute the histogram and then for each intensity i we are going to compute the interclass variance as i said we could solve this problem using one of those two methods we are going to use the first one so we compute the the interclass variance um, sigma squared w of i i here is the intensity that i'm i'm probing for um, as a candidate for threshold so that means we are going to search for um, the correct thresholding by probing every threshold possible we are going to use a, a, a threshold, the intensity T, that is the minimum argument of this, um, of this interclass variance. We have a W here 
because actually we are going to waive this interclass variance. I'm going to uh, describe that in the next slide. So the interclass variance or within class variance for some threshold is the weighted sum of variance of class A and B. So we, when we group pixels in, in the first class, it's always two, two classes because we, we want to separate the image into two uh, groups of pixels. The first one, we just compute the variance, so statistical variance of the pixels. And we multiply it by some wave. And the same for class B. I'm going to skip this slide just to show you this example here. So let's say we have this image. It's a small image with just six colors. The idea is that when we group the pixels together, we want them to have um, the least as possible variance. So in this case, when we are probing, for example, uh, one as a threshold, we group zero and one into class A and then 2, 3, 4, and 5 into the class B. When we compute variance here, the variance here, and then we weight that by the sum of frequencies of those values. So we are going to consider that the, um, the density of, the, uh, of such frequencies that are used uh, on the threshold also count when I want to minimize this. Otherwise, um, if I, uh, an image has um, some pixels with, that appear um, in just a few pixels, so intensities that appear just in a few pixels, could have a huge impact on the sum. And I don't want that. I, don't want, that the, I want that the pixels that have um, more presence in the image to be considered more important. And the same happens with class B. So because we are uh, just splitting the histogram into two parts, the class A takes um, the intensities from 0 to L minus 1, and class B from L to 255. And then this is the way we compute mean and variance. So it's just a regular way. Uh, in the same way, in here, mean and variance are in between 0 and L minus 1 for class A and from L to 255 for class B. I just showed you this uh, histogram of 6x6, um, six six. oh sorry, a, an image with 6x6 six six pixels and 6 colors and this is its histogram. And then if I compute all within class variances for all thresholds 0, 1, 2, 3, 5 and uh, 4 and 5 I'm going to find that L equal to 3 um, is the optimal threshold. Let us say why here. In, in this case, we have uh, pixels of the background. Zero, um, the zero value has 8 pixels. The one value has 7 pixels. The value 2 has 2 pixels. Value 3 has 6 pixels. 4, 9 pixels. And 5, 4 pixels. Computing it for every threshold um, is going to output these values here. So if we choose uh, a value that is too low, such as 0, the within class variance will be very high, so 3 point something. As we move along the histogram, we are going to see the values decrease, and 3 uh, would be the, the most, the, the minimum value in this case. You can note that 2 is also a good choice, but 3 is the minimum here, so here is why it was chosen. And this allows the image to be segmented into those two regions of black pixels here, that are considered background, and those white pixels that are considered the object. So let us um, take the, the same example we showed uh, before the board and then um, I'm going to tell you what I did in the first place so that first attempt to solve this was using an average threshold so I just computed the mean value of the intensities and the threshold was defined as the mean uh, that produces um, um, in this case produces um, 
results that are not very good but when we use the OTSU method that is also called global optimal threshold we could achieve a very good result despite we have some illumination changes here so probably the average threshold failed because um, because of this discontinuity in illumination so this top right hand side part of the image is more is more bright than the bottom left hand side